Hello and welcome back to my channel. Um, my name is Miranda and today I am coming at you on my favourite season of the year is the spooky season. Let's go. Now we're going to pretend today that the um, bad lighting is um, an intentional choice um, to cultivate the spooky vibes and not because my overhead light makes the um, video go all wibbly. Let's, let's buy into this creepy fantasy together, okay? So I hope you're doing well, I hope you are looking forward to autumn um, and um, reading a bunch of cosy creepy books like I am. Um, today I'm going to talk you through a bunch of my recommendations um, for creepy, slightly ghosty books. Um, not any of them really can be described as horror, um, but they're all kind of dark, kind of weird. Um, and that's just my favourite vibe for books. And then we're going to talk through some of the ones that I am thinking of maybe reading this season. Um, I have an absolute shit ton on my TBR. Um, I mean, generally, but also just a lot of creepy books. Um, and this is just a selection of ones that I might get to. Um, that I felt like talking about and kind of refreshing my memory on a bit um, or talking about them because I haven't, you know, I got them recently and haven't talked about them before and I'm excited about them. So I want to start off with my current read, which is Freak's Law by Jane Flett. Um, this is a book set in a small Scottish town in, I think, 1997. Yes. Um, and basically um, a circus comes to town um, and it's a slightly magical circus full of freaks and weirdos and people who don't fit in but um have found a family together um and I'm just under halfway through and I'm having a great time it's um kind of funny and silly um and it has a bit of an edge to it um and yeah there's kind of magic witchiness going on um the pull of the um, fun fair or the freak show, the freak's law as it's called, um, is getting to lots of the inhabitants of the town um, and yeah it's it's just cultivating a really great unique atmosphere um, at the moment and I'm having a great time. First of the recommendations that I've actually read is Woodworm by Leila Martinez, um, translated from Spanish by I think um, Anne McDermott and Sophie Hughes. So yes, Annie McDermott and Sophie Hughes, translated from Spanish. Um, this is about a woman, a young, young woman slash girl and her grandmother who are um, trapped in their house, essentially, um, by some kind of supernatural force. The, um, the house is very much a main character in this book. Um, it's a haunted house book, um, but in a very irreverent, and again, funny, but deeply, deeply disturbing, creepy way. Multiple generations of women have been trapped in this house and cannot leave. Um, and they do terrible things. They are angry and full of rage and hatred for the world. And most often the men that have done them wrong. Um, and there's a lot of revenge in this book. There's a lot of, a lot of humour um, and a lot of nastiness. It's such a unique vibe. Again, um, I think the US cover combined with this cover really gives you a sense of what you should expect going into this. Um, it's, yeah, like nothing else I've ever read before. Had a great time. Next is Private Rights by Julia Armfield. Um, this is a book set in a world wh where it is basically constantly raining. Um, it's a kind of close um, post-apocalyptic, poke there. Post-apocalyptic post -apocalyptic. world where um, the world's kind of retreated into um, the highlands if they can, if they can afford to. Um, lots of people just live their lives via boat. And in the midst of this, we follow three sisters who are grieving their father, who they were never really very close to, um, who was kind of a horrible man, you, you find out, um, and has sort of ruined their relationship with each other but they are forced together by the circumstances of his death um to sort of 
reckon with it, reckon with their um, own relationships. And underneath this all, there's, um, again, a very creepy house. But this house was designed by their architect father um, to sort of keep them out of the developing um, new wet world. And there's also something a lot darker going on. Um, people may be following them. People might be watching them. Um, the world might be um, ending quicker than they think. Um, there's a lot going on um, and I think even though I loved this book and I really enjoyed it, um, it really does ramp up a notch very quickly at the end, um, which I think didn't entirely work uh, compared to the very slow pace of the rest of it. But I did really enjoy it and I think the writing is gorgeous um, and it's a good, good read. A good read for making you feel really claustrophobic um, in a small house in the dark when it's raining outside. Next is The Familiar by Leigh Bardugo. Um, this is a kind of historical fantasy-ish um, novel set in uh, 16th century Spain um, and it follows a young servant who um, does has a gift for magic um, but very kind of small um, miracles and she gets noticed um, and then used by her boss um, to kind of further their social position, um, ends up going to court. Um, there's a kind of magical tournament of sorts and it's full of power and intrigue and um, political secrets and really cool fun magic um, set against a vivid dark historical background. It's a really fun um, atmospheric read. Next is possibly my favourite book that I read last year um, and that is North Woods by Daniel Mason. Um, I think I've talked about this before at length but I just love it so I don't care I'm gonna do it again. Um, this is another haunted house um, and I'm now realising that I need to do a book about all my favourite haunted house books because of a book, a video, um, because there are a lot of them and I want to talk about why I love them so much so pinning that um, for later but this is um, about a house or a kind of plot of land almost in um, Massachusetts um, and you basically follow the house and the land over many centuries and all the different people who live there. This is like nothing else I've ever read. It's so beautiful, so insane in moments. Um, there's so many different things going on and it's just brilliant. It's just brilliant and it's also just come out in paperback. Um, so it's a great time to go find it. Like it's got ghosts and a whole chapter about beetles porking so if that doesn't appeal to you I don't think we can be friends. Sorry. Next is The Echoes by Evie Wilde. This is brilliant. God I love this book. It starts off with um, a guy who has just died and become a ghost um, and he's essentially haunting his girlfriend um, who he's trying desperately to kind of make contact with but also just watching her go about her daily life however from there you then it it spirals way out into this huge narrative about um mostly this the girlfriend um hannah um and her past and what has what led her to where she is now, having left Australia um, and moved to London, leaving all of her family behind. You get the stories of the people that she grew up with, um, the past of the place she grew up in, um, and it's it's a deeply, deeply disturbing past and a story that really deserves to be told. It just took me away with it wherever it was going. Um, I was there and yeah, it's brilliant. Evie Wilde is a fantastic writer. Um, I love her writing so much and though The Bass Rock is still my favourite of hers, this is a close second. Last up for my recommendations before we get into some um, TBR is Poor Things by Alistair Gray. So the film of this came out earlier this year um, and I used that as an opportunity to read it, um, having meant to for literally years at this point and I'm so glad I did read it um, and I'm also really glad that I read um, it very close to watching the film. I can't remember if I read it first or watched it first but doing the two together was very interesting because they are very different um, but 
very good in their differentness. This is the story of a man who um, <laughs> supposedly creates a woman um, by placing the brain of a baby into the body of an adult woman um, and it's kind of like Frankenstein-esque story um, but <laughs> it's it's a story of two parts because the first part is one account of what happens and the second part is another account of what happens and they are very different. It's a very very clever how this fits together um, and I adored watching it all unfold um, and I think Alistair Gray is a very very good writer and I'm excited to read more of his stuff. Speaking of, a book that I definitely know that I will get to um, in the spooky season um, is Lanark by Alistair Gray. Um, I know that I'm going to get to this because it's the next book that I'm going to start. Um, I'm buddy reading it with um, some friends and I'm very excited about it. I basically bought this after finishing Poor Things um, and really enjoying it um, and this has been tantalising me on bookshelves in bookshops for ages um, because of this utterly intriguing cover. The fact that it basically has no description about it apart from saying that it's like Alistair Gray's magnum opus or whatever um, and I was like sure let's give it a go. I'm reading it with some friends um, hopefully that will mean that I understand more of what the hell's going on. As I understand it this is a slightly strange book um, and one that can you know take some work uh, but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Next is Sealed by Naomi Booth. This is a book that I've had on my TBR for a while now um, and it sounds horrible. Um, I'm very excited to read it. This is about a pregnant woman who um, lives in a world where there is an epidemic of skin sealing up over people's orifices I guess, so like mouths, nose, eyes, ears. Um, and she is worried about bringing a child into this world, um, what it will mean for her um, pregnancy um, and her life moving forward. They move away from the city to try and avoid this disease um, but find some other different dangers instead. I don't know what those are but it sounds scary. And I'm excited. Also this cover is brilliant. Next is Fen by Daisy Johnson. This is another one that has been on my TBR for ages. Um, I have another one of Daisy Johnson's books on my TBR as well called Sisters um, which is somewhat less creepy than this I think. I actually can't remember but I would love to read them both. Um, obviously they're on my TBR but I would love to read them both soon. I'd love to read everything soon. You know, this this one is seems more creepy. It's a collection of short stories, which I don't even realise for quite a while. Um, but the first one is about like eels or like creepy snaky things in a fen. And that sounds fun. But yeah, kind of weird folklore-y um, short stories. Sounds great. Next is Fragile Animals by Genevieve Jagger. Uh, this is about a woman who moves to a um, remote Scottish island um, and finds a man there who claims to be a vampire um, and they build a kind of relationship and that's all I know really apart from it's then about like the memory of her past and um, also Catholic guilt sounds as if it's about um, sexuality and kind of religion um, and vampires. I'm into it. Next is another short story collection um, and this is an anthology um, with stories from lots of different writers. It's Of the Flesh, um, 18 story, stories of modern horror. Um, I again don't know much about this apart from um, when I read the description of it I was like that sounds like a lot of writers that I want to read more works from. Yeah it's got um, stories from Marianne Enriquez, Michelle Faber um, and Evie Wilde who I adore. That's the main reason I requested this. I've also noticed it has a story from Lionel Shriver in it um, and I don't want to read that. Sometimes I love short stories, sometimes they really don't do anything for me um, and I feel like that's going to be a lot more hit and miss in a an anthology with lots of different authors. Um, so yeah I'm a bit apprehensive about this but still intrigued. Next is The Beauty by Elia Whiteley. This is another one I've wanted to read for ages. Um, I think this um, all, this edition also has the arrival of missives in it 
um yes it does which is another book that I wanted to read by her for a long time um the beauty is about weird mushroom stuff I've forgotten this is also about a world where women have all died um and the weird mushroom stuff comes from the women's bodies um or where the women's bodies were buried um so <laughs> sounds creepy next is a book that basically couldn't be more me if it tried and that is edith holler by um edward carey this isn't out yet um i got a sent an advance copy again because i read the description and thought i can't not have that um i also read little by edward carey um a while ago now and i really enjoyed it i thought the writing was great um so this is about a woman who is i think um yeah she lives in a playhouse um in a theater at the beginning of the 20th century um and she is warned that if she ever leaves the theatre will go to ruin and then this girl decides to write a play um about a monstrous legendary figure um said to use the blood of children to make a local delicacy called beetle spread it's creepy weirdness historical set in a theatre about a woman doing her own thing i couldn't not i'm really sorry next is luck and booth by jenny fagan this is a book that i have had for a while and i only just realized today when finding the books for this video that i have two copies of it i don't know how that's happened this is another book that's about a kind of house over um a long span of time um and i read the first part of it when i first got it ages ago and i really really loved it but i didn't ever go back to it i don't know why um so yeah i'm very excited about this um because it starts off with um a kind of creepy woman going into a house in edinburgh um, and maybe cursing it for a long time and all of the inhabitants that live there after um, so sounds great and lastly we have um, The Woods All Black by Lee Mandelo um, this is a book that I don't know much about because it was gift um, to me from my friend Emma um, and I just want to read you the first part of the description because it sounds fucking ace the Woods All Black is equal parts historical horror, trans romance and blood-soaked revenge, all set in 1920s Appalachia. I mean, come on! So yeah, I'm incredibly excited about this and I feel like it, it it's one of those books that, again, on the, on the tin, from that description, sounds like a perfect me book. Um, I'm very excited about it. So that is a selection of books that I will possibly be maybe trying to read this autumn um if you have read any of them um do let me know let me know what you thought um and if you haven't read any of them also let me know what you thought of something else if you want honestly i had forgotten how much talking about books to myself and a camera makes me feel so excited about them um and i have actually really missed this i've been putting it off for ages because um, I was like not having a lot of thoughts about the books that I was reading and I was getting all in my head about you know not having really intelligent things to say about every single thing that I was reading um, and actually I don't need to have that I can just get excited about stuff and that's okay I can be clever sometimes but I'm not clever all the time and that's that's okay anyway thank you very much for watching um, I will see you very soon